All right, and now we start the 2018 AMC 10A problem number one. What is the value of this expression? The first thing you need to know to work quickly through this problem is that anything to the negative one power is just the reciprocal. So three to the negative one is one third. Add one, you should mentally be converting one to three thirds as you're doing this. So one third plus three thirds is four thirds. To the negative one is three fourths. Again, mentally converting this one to four fourths to get seven fourths. To the negative one is four sevenths. And finally, plus one, which you think of as seven sevenths, gives answer choice B. And on to problem number two from the 2018 10A. Lillianne has 50% more soda than Jacqueline, and Alice has 25% more soda than Jacqueline. Pause there and try to make sense of it. You could use variables because we don't know how much soda Jacqueline has, but what's a nice number that you can take 25% of, but you can also take 50% of? Just assume that Jacqueline has four sodas. So if Jacqueline has four sodas and Alice has 25%, which is one fourth, more, Alice will have five, and Lillian has 50% more, which is one half, that's four plus half of four, uh, Lillianne will have six. Now read the question. What is the relationship between the amounts of soda that Lillianne and Alice have? So as you can see, Lillianne has one more soda than Alice, which is one-fifth of Alice's soda. One-fifth is equivalent to 20%. So Lillianne has 20% more soda than Alice. Continuing on to problem number three from the 2018 AMC 10A. A unit of blood expires after 10 factorial seconds. Yassine donates a unit of blood at noon of January 1st. On what day does his unit of blood expire? Okay, so you want to get started. Um, this is the number of seconds. Don't calculate 10 factorial. That would be ridiculous. Just write it all out because there's probably an opportunity to simplify. When doing factorial, never put the times one. It's irrelevant. So this is the number of seconds. How would I get the number of minutes that have gone by? Well, you'd have to divide by 60. Now that we have the number of minutes, how would I get the number of hours? I would have to, again, divide by 60, which is the same as multiplying by 1 over 60. Then how would I get the number of days? I would again have to divide now by 24 because there's 24 hours in a day. This now represents the number of days. So four factorial, which is the last three here, is 24. We can cancel that. Six and 10 make 60. Um, five goes into 60 12 times. Uh, four goes into here twice and here three times. Three goes into nine three times. And you get 3 times 2 times 7 is 42 days. Now, there, it's going to definitely be D or E in February, but be very careful because they're so close together. One of them is going to be a trap answer. Um, so it's January 1st, and we're going to go forward. If it goes forward one day, it'll be January 2nd. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So it makes sense that if we go to January 31st, um, then you will get 30 days out of that. Then you have to add 12 more days to equal February 12th. Now, if you're not sure if January has 30 or 31 days, you're kind of lucky in this problem because if you thought it had 30 for a second, that would only be 29 days advancement, and you'd have to go 13 more, making it February 13th. So lucky for you, they didn't put that on the test. You can quickly realize there must be 31. And now problem number four in the 2018 AMC 10A. How many ways can a student schedule three mathematics courses, algebra, geometry, and number theory, in a six-day period if no two mathematics courses can be taken in consecutive periods? Uh, what courses the student takes during the other three periods is of no concern here. I mean, of course, do other classes really matter? All right, 
So what we should do for this is just create some cases real quick, put six spaces to represent the six classes. We don't need to put a, g, and n in. We can just put x's, and then there will be three factorial equals six arrangement of the letters a, g, and n. So you could have it like this, this, and this. We could also then move the third class over to the last period. So you'll get like this. You could then move this one over to here. Uh, so you will get x blank x blank blank x. And lastly, you could move this x in as well. So you get blank x blank x blank x. Now, uh, each of these is going to have three factorial equals six arrangements because when you have three objects, the number of permutations is three times two times one, three factorial. So you get six, 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 and six, and that's 24. And the last problem of the set, the 2018 AMC 10A problem five. A, B, and C were on a hike and were wondering how far away the nearest town was when A said, we are at least six miles away. Bob replied, we are at most five miles away. C then remarked, actually, the nearest town is at most four miles away. It turned out that they're all filthy liars, that none of the three statements were true. Let D be the distance in miles to the nearest town. Which of the following intervals is the set of all possible values of D? It's important to understand from the answers these are not ordered pairs. It's called interval notation. You can look a video up on it. Maybe Khan Academy has it. Um, it basically means that between 0 and 4 is the, all these values are the interval it's talking about. And this one's between 4 and 5 and so on. So um, if none of them are telling the truth, at least 6 miles away would be 6 to infinity. So it can't be more than 6 because that would mean she's telling the truth. So it has to be less than 6. But Bob said we are at most 5 miles away. Well, if you're at most five, you would be five or less. And since Bob is a liar, or he's wrong, it must be greater than five. And the only answer that has that is D. It doesn't actually matter what C says, because his doesn't really change anything. At most four miles away is just more restrictive than Bob's reply. 